Today on Locked On Canadians, we ask ourselves, is it time to ask questions about the coaching? Your Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 1175. And today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. We want to thank you real quick for making us your first listen of the day every day. As you know, we're available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Laura Saba, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined by the wonderful Ian Boisvert. Ian, it's been another week of losses. How are you feeling on this Sunday morning, which despite daylight savings or daylight, daylight savings ending, uh, still feels extremely early for me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're not really morning people. I, I'll speak for myself. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. <laughs> which makes this episode particularly difficult because the Canadians gave us nothing again. Uh, just go said, on, girl, you know, give us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You said. Uh, you said. You know, after another week of losing, and I feel like we're going to hear that a lot this year at the the rate that things have been going. And we do want to talk about that. I do want to focus on a couple of things about that Penguins game real quick. But in our second segment, we will start asking ourselves questions about the coaching because it's not as nuanced. It's not as simple as we think. It's a lot more nuanced than that. And, and you know, everybody's really frustrated right now. Um, and we're going to do our weekly recap. Um, and then in our final segment, we're going to do our weekly forecast because we, you know, that that that's kind of our beginning of the week. But here's the thing. I promise you that we've got a lot of fun guests coming up, you know, as, as this season has been going, not the way we wanted to, we still wanted to give you guys a lot of content to really enjoy. And that's going to start with tomorrow's episode. We have Mike Camito coming on. He's actually like that. The episode we did with him uh, was one of my favorites that we did over five years with Scott. And so I'm very excited for Ian to meet him as well. Like truly, truly a fantastic podcast guest has written a book about the Habs and um, and it's it's good to it's good to dive into some joy because if I wanted to dive into the Penguins game last night, I, where do we start, Ian? Because I, I do want to talk about that headshot. Yeah, we can get to that. Um, okay. <laughs> I think the um, game the game officially started when we saw the lineup and Josh Anderson was on the top line. Um, granted, I thought it was fine. I thought that was a fine idea. If there was ever a time to promote Josh Anderson, now is the moment to do so. He's been playing great. And lo and behold, Josh Anderson on the top line is not the reason the Canadians lost that game. The reason the Canadians lost that game is because whenever they got the puck, they made sure they gave it right back to the Penguins as quickly as they could. They People blame, oh, the defensive structure's bad. No, the defensive structure got the puck a lot against Pittsburgh. They just whether it was the defenseman or the forwards coming back in support, immediately put the puck back onto the Pittsburgh Penguin stick. Mike Matheson had two turn turn turnovers that both directly resulted in goals. You know, it's, you know, after the Washington game, Marty said that they threw up all over themselves. That's what happened again. They had the puck in so many opportunities to get it out of their zone with possession and they just threw up on themselves. And it's just, it's really frustrating watching this team beat itself every night. Um, and it, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying and it's tough because you're seeing Marty kind of resort to old coaching tricks. Like he was really hard on them. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, they shouldn't be disciplined. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve to have like a come to Jesus moment. Um, I, I really do feel that the Canadians are not executing really well. And, but part of it is coaching and it's, I'm I'm kind of getting a little bit stressed out about Marty just resorting to old coaching tricks. Are you referring um, to the bag skate? I am referring to the bag skate. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think it's a it's a lever you can't pull all the time. And he hasn't. It's the first time he's done that. Now he yeah. can't do it again this week, I don't no. think. Right? No. Like that won't ma that won't mean anything anymore. <laughs> but here's the thing, like, so do we take it as like the bag skate made them better defensively? Um, or <laughs> Do we take it as the bag skate like wasn't didn't register at all because they kept passing badly? <laughs> I, I don't think I, I, the bag <laughs> skate didn't mean anything to this game. I don't think honestly, like it didn't make them play all that that much better if they did play better at all. Mm -hmm. Um, they they that bag skate was just you know the, a newspaper and you're bopping the dog on the nose with it. Bad. Yeah. That's what that bag skate was. 
It was, you're not going to work in the game. You're going to work in practice. I, I don't know that they got outworked against Pittsburgh. I think they just, they, you can't bag skate turnovers out of these guys. Like you can, it's, that's yeah. not how you do this. It, that is done in the film room. That's yeah. done watching the, the, the tape of what they just played and, and watching. Yes. And watching, watching them make the, the wrong play and see, see, this is a play you shouldn't be making. Um, He's a big Marty is a big proponent of taking risks, taking, um, you know, uh, calculated risks that that have a big payoff at the other end of it. They're taking a lot of like so so risks that almost always end up with the Penguins or their, their opponent having the puck. Yeah, they're not being bold. No, no, they're they're like they're like making soft passes that won't even get like out to the blue line the thing that's killing me a lot is when they get the puck in the defensive zone after defending for a while and instead of just dumping the puck out to to live to fight another day as marty will say or see another pitch as marty would say they kind of just float the puck to an area of their defensive zone where they're hoping a play a teammate will get to it and when you hope that often, it doesn't come true. Yeah. <laughs> like they're just, I, I watched David Savard do it a bunch. I, and it's not, he's not the only one by far, but I see him do it a lot where they'll finally get control of it. And instead of skating it or passing it off to somebody, he'll just throw it to an area of the defensive zone and say, jump ball, go get it. And they don't. Yeah. So it's just, it's again, a lot of self-inflicted wounds. The Penguins are not good. They're one of the worst teams in the league this year to, to lose to them. In any fashion, twice, it's kind twice, of unacceptable. Twice. twice. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of unacceptable. They have, I think the Penguins have like four wins this year, and half of them are the Canadians. Like it's not, it's not good. It's not good yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, remember two years ago when they made the playoffs, and it was because like if the Canadians had won any of the games against the Penguins, like the Penguins would not have made the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It feels like that again. Uh, I don't think this Penguins team is making the playoffs. I'm just making a no. point. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, like it's, it's not, I, and I don't necessarily think it's about effort, um, because it just, it feels like they just don't know what to do. And that's more dangerous, like effort you can fix with a bag skate. Like you said, you can't fix those turnovers with a bag skate. I just feel like their decision-making is all off and they just don't know what to do and they don't have any better ideas. And that's why in our second segment, we are going to talk a little bit about the coaching, but I did want to get to that headshot. Um, it yeah. feels, and I know, you know, we are biased. Obviously, we are Canadians fans, but it does feel a lot that, you know, sometimes something that other teams get away with, like Arbor Jack, I would not get away with, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And Achari was a, was a pain in the butt that entire game. Um what, He laid a big hit on Christian Dvorak, even though Dvorak never had the puck, was not near the puck. He gets laid out. They don't call anything. Okay. He cross-checks Brendan Gallagher into the goal. Never had the puck. No call. Okay. And then there's this one where, you know, I know when Barron got hit, everyone argued, well, he changes the position of his head really close to the hit. And that's why, you know, the head contact was unavoidable. Sokowski is, he's, he's in an athletic position because he's going for the puck in the corner. And you watch him from the slot to the corner where he gets hit. His head does not change location. It is at the same height going into the boards. And Achari comes in, shoulder out, picks the head, doesn't try. He could absolutely just hit him in the body behind the head. He chose not to. He chose to go through the head. The fact that they didn't even review it on the ice, which is why that mechanism exists, is to when, a, when they miss a call like that, to be like, okay, we're going to review that hit because we think we might have missed something. To not even review it, to lose Slavkovsky for the rest of that game, and I don't think we have an update on him yet. Um, they're trying to come back in that game. At that point, they're only down one. You're taking out one of their best players, and Achari, and Achari gets to still be on the ice. And Mike Sullivan is it should be ashamed of himself for putting him back out there. That that to me was the the worst part about that. Mike Sullivan's coaching for his job right now, and that's the stuff he pulls. That's garbage. Like putting. Putting Achari back out there, he knows exactly what he's doing. And I know Penguins fans will say, well, why is Jack Guy out there? Jack Guy didn't do anything wrong to that point. That's why Jack Guy's out there. Because so, he was just playing defense innocently. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's absolutely good on Jack Guy for going after Achari. That was a garbage hit by a garbage player. And I, he was a garbage player all night. He was yeah. doing that sort of garbage all night. I cannot handle that. So Mike Sullivan... Looks good on you. I hope you're looking for a new job in December because it doesn't look like things are going particularly well for you. Like that was his Stanley Cup was putting Achari back out there at the end of the game. It was gutless <laughs> behavior. 
Absolutely. And that's and that's the thing too. It's that like like I said, like you, these players, they don't get talked about the same way Arbor Jack I does. Right. No. And that's the thing that's really, really frustrating. Um, so, yes, at the time, like just before we started recording, I checked to see it is early on Sunday, though. So there might be an update on this. Uh, but there was no update on Slav. Coffee. No supplemental discipline for Achari, by the way. Oh, yeah, we um, knew that, too. Because and for what it's worth, it, that means nothing to me. It doesn't make Slavkovsky's brain any healthier. It doesn't help the Canadians come back in that game. It just would have, you know, been nice to see a player get any kind of punishment for a garbage hit. But so it exactly. Is. All right, so we are going to ask some difficult questions in our next segment, including, is it time to put the coach on the hot seat? And that's coming up in just a moment here on Locked On Canadian. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. I honestly, I find it so, so easy to use, and Prize Picks puts its members first. So with all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as little as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. I'm going to say that again. Download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price picks. Run your game. This episode is also brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate is to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform that makes everything a one-stop shop. It is so easy to use, and you can connect with quality candidates faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And I know like hiring is often really hard. It's so, so important to get the right candidate because otherwise everything will not fall into place the way that you want it to. And honestly, it's so slow and overwhelming unless you use Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right. It is that time of the week. Uh, <laughs> we need to talk about coaching. This team is, it's not even treading water. It's finding new ways to be, to be bad. Um, and, you know, this far we've kind of talked, we, we've said that it is kind of drastic uh, to talk about putting Marty's hold on, uh, head on a platter. Um, I don't think that we're there yet, but we do need to talk about it seriously. You're on mute. I knew I was too. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of the people firing Marty St. Louis are, are have a giant misunderstanding of how this organization sees Marty St. Louis and how this organization judges where this team should be right now. They weren't expecting a playoff run. They were hardly even expecting to be in the mix, as Marty kept saying. Um, everything in order for them to be in the mix, everything would have had to go right, and that's not how you judge a coach's performance. Marty is investing in the team's future by, by making them learn this defensive structure. And Marty can't teach the turnovers out of these guys. That's execution. The players need to be better. Um, and that's, you know, we, we, we ragged on Christian Dvorak a lot in the previous episode. I thought he was excellent against Pittsburgh. He was so good. He scored the only goal, but he was even good before that. He was, you know, getting the puck in deep, just doing fourth line stuff. That's all he needs to do in order to be an effective player. Right. We but, talked about that. Like, don't try to be something you're not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I thought Nick Suzuki has turned the puck over a lot. He's not leading by example in that, in that way. 
I, I just, I really struggle with the concept that, you know, firing coaches and bringing in new ones will fix what ails the Canadians. And that's not, I don't believe that that's going to do anything. I don't believe that that's going to happen. Like, you know, Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon have kind of hitched their wagon to Marty and it's going to be, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously, they're going to keep him longer than is necessary too. like, based on the fact that they took such a wild, you know, swing with him. Um, But I don't think it's a time to talk about firing the coach, but I do think it's often like what, what I haven't seen for the last three years is I haven't seen them bring in somebody where I have confidence that they're going to help Marty become the coach that he needs to be. Right. And I get it that like, this is a development phase for the Canadians. I completely agree with all of that, but at the same time, like there are things that are lacking and, and, and we do kind of have to endure this because this is the way that they've decided that this team is going to go and the players are going to have to fit in. Like they're going to have to do it and they're, they have no choice. Um, I think the one thing with Nick Suzuki that I do appreciate is that yes, he's not leading by example right now, but he's one of the first to kind of call himself out. He's one of the first to take accountability. Like, you know, you just show him that video and he's going to turn it right around. Right. He's going to become what we need him to be. But I just think overall, like there's decisions that get made sometimes where I get a little bit frustrated, but I also think that it's the players themselves seem to have no idea what to do. And I feel like there's got to be something that can be done there in the coaching, in the, in the, in the practices, et cetera, et cetera. There's got to be something that we can play with there. I would, before I got to that state, I would like to see these these guys protect the puck a little bit better. T- t- they are way too careless with the puck, and I don't know that that comes from a lack of understanding of how to play the way Marty wants to play. I think it comes from, you know, a, a bunch of young players who aren't totally sure how they're supposed to, you know, like what plays they're supposed to be making at a given point in time, because I think they're always looking for that home run play. Um but a lot of them aren't young. Like I said, Mike Matheson had two turnovers that led directly to goals on, on Saturday night. That Mike Matheson can't be a guy where that, that happens. You know, I know he has the puck a lot and we're big fans of Mike Matheson here. Um, but like th- that, that cannot happen. They were two choices by Mike Matheson that failed immediately in very vulnerable areas on the ice. One in your own defensive zone, the other at the opposing blue line. He, tr- he puts a no look, drop pass back to Lane Hudson and Hudson tried his best to fight it off and, and, and keep the puck, but he put his teammate in a terrible position. Um, I, I do think that this team is kind of living and dying by their special teams. Uh, they were bad this week. The special teams were not good. Uh, they went 0 three against Seattle, Washington and Pittsburgh. They were outscored 17 to six on the power play. They went one for 12, it's 8.3%. That you're not going to win games doing that. They scored one power play goal all week. Uh, yep, whatever. Like a lot of that's coaching. Sure. Execute. Like the first line got a, the first power play unit got like six opportunities against uh, Washington and they scored once that, you know, that's the game. You guys were tied going into the third period. Um, penalty kill. They went eight for 13. That's 61 and a half percent. That can't happen. <laughs> you gave up five power play goals in a week. That cannot happen. Yep. So the, you know, we, we were we were all happy about the team's special teams. Um, the five on five play has not been good all year. So that that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. That has not improved at all. But the other thing, you know, against Washington, 24 giveaways. Washington had 14 against Pittsburgh, 20 giveaways. Pittsburgh had 15. You're not going to win the game handing the other team the puck that many times like I. Yeah. Coaching this, coaching that, I, I like fix this first. And if it still is bad, then I'm looking at Marty. But yeah. the, the Canadians are are throwing games away by literally throwing the puck to the other team at any time they get the opportunity to. Yes. That to me is the takeaway from this week is they cannot take care of the puck. Well, that's the thing. Like what I'm concerned about is that like instead of getting better at things, they're getting worse at things that they were good at. Like, yeah. That's the biggest part that I'm concerned about. You know, we talked about how the Penguins like kind of looked so good because they played together for so long. Like, I feel like it's still fairly early, but I'm not seeing incremental improvements. I'm seeing like monumental um, regression. Regression. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm concerned about. And it's because there's not much to regress from, right? They were the fifth worst team in the league last year. It's not like we were, 
lighting the world on fire and we were on a PDO banner or whatever. <laughs> we, 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 we drafted in the top five. It's not, yeah. you know, so the regression is steep and it's steep concerningly. So because we, they're not good. They weren't good last year. <laughs> It's it's going to be a thing. All right. Um, really quickly, um, we have democratically decided not to elect a star for the week. Um, we are um, we, we didn't see anything in this team that deserved that. Uh, I also didn't see a turning point to the week because they were bad and then they just stayed bad. Like <laughs> The turning point was the start to the, the third period against Washington. And it's a bad yeah. turning point where they, okay. as Marty said, threw up all over themselves. So that's your... That's your Locked on Canadians turning point for that week. Of the week. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have our weekly forecast, and that's coming up. And hopefully it's better than last week, honestly, because uh, I don't think it can get that much worse. And uh, we'll be looking at the games to come in just a moment here on Locked on Canadians. Listen up, renters. Ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments just watching your money vanish into thin air? It's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, you pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and more than 700,000 hotels and properties. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, redeem them toward a future rent payment. They're designed to meet your lifestyle. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the Points Guy and Bankrate. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NHL. That's J O I N B I L T dot com slash locked on NHL. Make sure to use our URL so they know we sent you. Joinbuilt.com slash locked on NHL to start earning points with your rent payments today. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, it's time for the weekly forecast. Do you know what's up, what's coming up for this week? <laughs> yeah, so you, you said you were hoping that this week would be uh, better, and I have uh, bad news. It does not look like it's going to be much better. Well, the Calgary Flames are unexpectedly the hottest team. I don't understand how they're good. Nobody understands how they're good. Um, yeah. At least for the Canadians, we can kind of understand why they're bad. Yeah. Um, so Calgary is up first um, and then followed by the New Jersey Devils, which is a team that I never like watching the Habs play. <laughs> and then on Saturday, the 9th of October, it is time for the Toronto Maple Leafs for Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah, so... That Calgary game, Calgary, like you said, unexpectedly very good. 6-4-1 and one to start the year. They're third in the Pacific Division. They swept the Habs last year, a 2-1 win and a 5-2 win for the Calgary Flames. Um, Kadri and Backlund both had two goals against the Canadians, so those are guys I would try to keep contained, um, as well as the resurgent, somewhat resurgent Jonathan Huberdeau, who looks a lot better than he did last year. Uh, he'll be coming home for a game against the Canadians, so... Um, you know, last week, my key to the Washington game was no locals so that you can still kind of use that against the Flames. Um, the Canadians scored three goals against the Flames last year. Total. That was it. Uh, Caulfield, Savard and Gustav Lindstrom. So not exactly lighting that the world was, on He fire. was here last year. <laughs> yeah, apparently I, I, that's he just shows up. He's a guy that we don't really know wh how he gets to where he gets to, but he, he's <laughs> always there. Um what are, you, what are you thinking for a key to that game? What are you thinking as far as how the Canadians come out with a win? Honestly, I just, I don't even know if I'm, I, I could hope for a win. I just want them to play better than they have this past week. 
I want better special teams and I want like crisp, crisp passing and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the key for all of these games this week for me, one of them is protect the puck. If you don't protect the puck, if you don't care about the puck, the game's over. They're just mm -hmm. going to lose against the Flames specifically. They have to make life harder for their opposing goalie. Um, Dan Vladar and, and Dustin Wolf are very good, both over 900 save percentage. Um, the Canadians have had 30 shots in a game once, and it was against Seattle, a game they lost eight to two. Yep. That that's bad. I don't think you need me to tell you that that's bad. They need to shoot the puck more. They need to be in opportunities to shoot the puck more. So mm -hmm. try to do that against the Flames. Um, it won't go yeah. well if you don't. It's like you said last week. It all starts in the defensive zone, and everything is rooted in there, right? So all their problems come from there. I have been on that since last year, that a lot of their problems stem from not being able to move the puck out of their own zone. That problem has just been magnified this year. Um, so let's see if they can use the Flames as a get-right game, um, because then the schedule gets very difficult. They head into New Jersey. The Devils are 7-5-2 and two to start the year. 16 points are tied for first in the Metro. Montreal went 1-2-0 and oh against the Devils last year, a 5-2 loss, a 3-2 win, and a 4-3 loss that I was at. I was at that game. That was one of J I think that was Jake Allen's last game or one of his last games as a Montreal Canadian before he was traded to the Devils. Um, so the Devils saw him give up four and said, that's our guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Caulfield had four points in those three games versus New Jersey. Anything that stands out to you in this matchup that you want to highlight? Against New Jersey? Honestly, like I, I, I hate the Devils. Yeah. And I just, I don't understand how they're good. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I I organically get that they're good, but I just feel like there's they're missing an element and how are they so good missing that element, right? Like, I don't trust their defense. I don't trust their goaltending. They have some of the best players in the league. <laughs> just, I, I just, I can't put them all together. I did want to ask real quick, um, the food apparently at, at is it Prudential Arena? Yeah. Um, it's apparently legendary. Have you tried any of it? Is it good? Yeah, I, I got lucky a couple of times. My dad knew a guy who worked for the Devils and I was able to sit in like the club seats with all like the all you can eat food. And that stuff was pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> like I'm eating roast beef at a hockey game. That's pretty cool. My, my yeah. wife got sushi. I had a I had a pretzel shaped like the Devils logo. That was cool. I think the Canadians lost like seven to two that game. So uh, <laughs> at least I was able to eat my feelings. It's a cool arena. It's it's the Prudential Center is really cool. The Jumbotron is massive. Yeah, it's um, just it's so. just a team we don't like. Yeah, and it's a got to go to Newark, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not super fun. Well, some of their fans are kind of unhinged, so. Oh yeah, every game someone does something that should put them in like the devil's jail that they have at the <laughs> arena. Um, so that is what it is. It's just part and parcel with going to Newark, New Jersey. Um, Sorry, we went off on a tangent, but yes, go on. <laughs> no, it's a necessary one. I appreciate it. Um, the key for me is to find their five on five game. Uh, the Devils' special teams are good. Power play is almost twenty nine percent you're going to give up a power play goal. Like That's just something that you need to come to terms with um, and protect the puck. As I said last time, the devils are too talented. You cannot afford to just keep giving them opportunities with the puck. You need to protect it. Uh, and then we head into Toronto on Saturday, the last game of the week, Toronto six, five and one to start the year, 13 points, third in the Atlantic Montreal did win one to nothing opening night, probably the highlight of the season so far. Uh, Montembo stood on his head, single-handedly won that game with a 48 save shutout. I don't think they will be as lucky this time around. <laughs> I think they will need to score more than one time if they have any chance of winning this game. What are you looking at here? I'm looking at, again, special teams. I'm looking at, like, I feel that the Toronto Maple Leafs are worse than they should be. Um, and I, I, it's interesting to hear that they're 6 5 and one because, like, you know, there was a jersey thrown onto the ice. And I was like, the, oh, the God. vibes are terrible. I don't Their understand vibes, how they have a winning record right now. <laughs> yeah. Their vibes are really bad. Uh, but I think with it, with with Toronto again, it's about capital, capitalizing on their mistakes. And I think in the last few weeks, we've seen the Canadians make more mistakes than they are capitalizing on. Um, so if you're able to reduce your owner, you keep talking about uh, protect the puck, which I think is so clear. Um, but as well, just like if you reduce your own boneheaded moves and boneheaded plays and just kind of jump on the ones the Leafs make, because they will make them, right? Like the Leafs yep. are not a perfect team. They are a strong team, but they're not a perfect team. And like they can be exploited, but I think the Canadians right now, their their confidence is is kind of terrible. How about this? The key to winning that Leafs game is playing much better in the games before it um, and gaining yeah. some confidence back, both for the goaltending, 
which again, will need to be amazing if they are going to beat the Leafs, but also um, just in terms of like their little habits, because I do think that the Leafs can be beatable if your game plan is correct. But the way the Canadians are playing right now, they don't know what to do. They have absolutely no, keep throwing up all over themselves. They have absolutely no idea yeah. like what to do next. If they can like get that, like rein that in a little bit and get a handle on it before the Leafs game, I think they have a shot. Yeah, for me, it's two things I've been harping on for a while. For well, one all episode, this episode, two, the second one, I've been harping on for weeks now. First one, protect the puck. Obviously, they cannot afford to give Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and William Nylander the puck. They just they, they can't. They will lose this game if they give them twenty four turnovers. <laughs> they can give it to Tavares. Yeah, yeah, him and his <laughs> amulet. You, you'll probably be fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the other thing is no sideshows. I've been pointing yeah. out that every game has some kind of sideshow element for the Canadians. The stars need to be the stars. The role players need to role pl be the role players. The goalie needs to stop the puck. Yeah. That, it seems silly to say all that, but watch every game. That has not happened. So th they need to figure that out. Yeah. We've talked a lot about getting back to basics. Like, I think this is a prime example of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to head to our trivia and head out of here? Yes, I do. And I do want to remind everybody that tomorrow we have Mike Comito on on our episode and we're so, so excited about that. Yeah, should be a good time. Uh, all right. Last question was Montreal's last five on three goal came on December 3rd, 2022. Who scored it? And you had it. You had a eureka moment when we left the podcast oh last time. God. Do you remember I who it is? I forgot. It has oh left you. I completely forgot. Wait, I know who it is. I know who it is. it's Arbor Jackai. <laughs> it is Arbor Jackai. He scored a goal from Uri Slavkovsky uh, in Edmonton. It was a very funny goal because you could tell Jackai is kind of like, why am I out here? And he's <laughs> looking for a pass. He's looking for a pass. He's creeping in. He's creeping in. He just fires a wrist shot into the net. Like it was the least five on five, five on three goal that's ever been scored. Um, that was really funny. It's just, you know, Thursday was so long ago, Ian. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, yeah. So it was 2022, apparently. Um, <laughs> all right. Today's question, uh, important with the Canadians game against Pittsburgh. Montreal's last win over the Penguins came on March 14th, 2023. Who scored the game winning goal? March 4th, 2023. March 14th, 2023. 14th. Yeah. Pi day 3.14. Okay. Who scored all the right. game winning goal? Good luck. All right. If you have it, put it in the comments. We'll pin you. Yeah. Um, also, you and, can uh, send it to us on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, email. You guys know how to find us. Well, Laura's about to tell you all the ways that you can find us. So head on over there. Um, so thank you so much for listening to this episode. You can find us on Instagram at Locked On Canadians. You can find us on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. Um, you can email us at LockedOnCanadians at gmail.com. Um, please subscribe. Please tell your friends, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thank you for supporting this show. You'll find my co-host all over social media at Maybe It's Ian. You'll find me all over social media at The Active Stick. Uh, we will be back with a very special guest, Mike Camino, tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about his book. We'll talk about fun Habs things for once. Um, and that's all coming up tomorrow. We will see you then. <laughs>